momentum conservation. So we, we, we can start a new one. Chapter 11, pork and angular momentum. So torque is equal to R crossed into F, and then angular momentum, R crossed into linear momentum. So the units of torque is Newton meters, and the units of angular momentum is meter times kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meter squared per second. So the concept of torque is not new completely to chapter 11. Um, angular momentum is a little bit newer. Okay, so it's here it says, um, angular momentum is a vector quantity, more precisely a pseudo vector that represents the product of a body's rotational inertia and rotational velocity about a particular axis. So uh, the version that they're talking about here, the version of angular momentum is I omega. I omega. So it's the product of your uh, moment of inertia and angular velocity. So it's kind of similar to linear momentum because it's mv, right? So mass is always replaced by moment of inertia and velocity is replaced by angular velocity when it comes to linear uh, angular momentum. So they're saying angular momentum uh, is um, rotational inertia and the product of rotational inertia, which is i, rotational velocity, which is omega. Now, however, if the particle's trajectory lies in a single plane, it is sufficient to discard the vector nature of angular momentum and treat it as a scalar. So if the motion is only in a plane, you know, then you can treat it just as a, almost a scalar. Uh, angular momentum can be considered the rotational analog of linear momentum. Thus, where linear momentum P is proportional to mass and linear speed, angular momentum is proportional to moment of inertia and angular speed, right? I omega. Now, the other version of the angular momentum equation is the R cross into P, okay? So when would we use that? So we, we would use that in this kind of a case, right? Let's say you have a, something going, rotating, going like this, you know, with the V, you see there? And then let's say this is the origin. So let's say you have a point particle, has a velocity like that. And if I wanted to know the linear moment, the angular momentum of that object with respect to the origin, I would take the cross product of R crossed into P. I wouldn't do the I omega version of the equation, right? So you see, that's what they're doing there. Velocity of the particle m with respect to the origin O can be resolved into components parallel and perpendicular to the radius vector r, right? So you're gonna do here, L is equal to r crossed into p. So it's gonna be, the p is this, ve this way, right? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a vector out of the board the angular momentum out of the board. And then if you want to do the magnitude of the angular momentum, R times P times sine of theta, right? M, the P is gonna be MV sine of theta. But then what theta is it? It's this theta, right? sine of theta. Or you can even say it's this theta. 
they, the, uh, it doesn't it's matter which of these two we, I take the sign of, yeah, it's I still get the same answer. You see here? Uh, the way that they define the theta is this one here. You see? So then, what's the geometrical meaning of that? If you do V sine theta, it gives you this component of the V, right? The perpendicular component, V perpendicular. You see? So that's what they're doing here, is they're saying if an object is going at a random direction, it can be divided into two components, V parallel and V perpendicular. The v perpendicular is what causes it to have an angular momentum. V parallel doesn't do anything. You see? V parallel doesn't have an angular momentum. So if an object is moving away from my line of sight, or coming towards my line of sight, it doesn't have angular momentum. So if it comes colliding into me, it's not gonna make me spin, right? It's just gonna come and make me go back. But if an object has like this kind of motion and it's coming toward me, so imagine it's coming at an angle like that. I see, it's coming at an angle. So that means it has this velocity and has this velocity, right? Oh, no. So now it has angular momentum. So when it comes and hits me, it makes me rotate like a slap, right? So if your wife slaps you like this, no angular momentum. <laughs> but no, that's not the, how they slap. Or I said, you gave me angular momentum, that's not fair. <laughs> when she, there she'll go like this, right? So yeah, when you give a slap, you're giving somebody an angular momentum, right? You're coming from the side. Yeah. Okay, so box, they, same thing with boxing. They push them you see? That's why your head goes to the side. But if you go like this, jab, no angular momentum is imparted. Only linear momentum. So with the jab. Yeah. Well, that one is angular momentum this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with a jab. Yeah. Angular momentum with oh, respect to the center of mass, mass, with yeah. respect to this axis, okay. right? But with respect to this axis, no. you need to give me a hit like this in order for me to rotate. See, so remember there's three axes. This one, this one, and then this one. There was a video online, and I was trying to explain to somebody something like this where this guy's on a hill and he throws like a trash bag and it hits the other guy. But instead of pushing him down the hill, he flips and then, it does a spin because of, you know, it gained all the acceleration going downward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, it was going this way too, but it was going more downward, so it spun him instead of pushing him backwards, which is the angular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you throw something like this, let's say somebody is like yeah. this, then I'm over here, I throw him a trash bag, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I see. And, and so it's going to give him an impart to him. Uh, this is uh, MV. Yeah. And then this is their center of mass, R. Yeah, and just, he just. See spun that? Around. Simple, a simple example, like you say. Yeah. If this is his center of mass, this is R, and then the, the trash hits him like this. Let's see if I can find it. R cross into MV. It imparts an angular momentum into the board. And into the board, angular momentum causes you to do what? To rotate clockwise. So this guy's gonna start tumbling like this, right? And then he's gonna tumble clockwise like that. That's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> what a good scenario, I like that. Here, take this trash out. I'll, Down I, the driveway, you know. If I find it, I'll show it to you. Oh, good, good. Okay, so you see it, uh, be parallel. But it's interesting, we're saying, what we're saying now, we're saying V parallel doesn't yield the angular momentum, only V perpendicular gives you. Uh, so if you're hit by something that has a V perpendicular, it can transfer its angular momentum to you. But in the field of Dop the Doppler effect, in physics two, we learned that V parallel yields Doppler effect, not V perpendicular. So V perpendicular yields angular momentum, but no Doppler effect. If something is moving toward you, a perpendicular to you, there's no Doppler shift. 
But it's, if it's moving away from you, it's red shifted. Towards you, blue shifted. You see. So V parallel has the importance in in uh, sound waves and light waves. But when it comes to mechanics, it's V perpendicular that's more important. So only if torque is zero does angular mm -hmm. momentum conserve. Oh yeah, then you have the equation torque is equal to change in angular momentum with respect to time. Just like force is equal to change of linear momentum over time. Oh, so F is dp dt, you replace F by torque, then you replace P by L. You see? So, um, that parallel component is the same thing in magnetism where you had uh, like a particle. Yes, yeah, in, in magnetism, it's the perpendicular component. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the perpendicular component that gives you, oh yeah, you see here? Relation between force, torque, and linear momentum and angular momentum. L is R cross into P. And, and it's also I omega. Like for these kinds of objects, I would use I omega because they're continuous objects. It's not like a point particle like this. Right. It's more like a rotating object. So I would take their I and I would multiply it by their omega. And then I would take my I and multiply by omega, the earth, hollow sphere, hollow cylinder, solid cylinder, and some random pot spinning, right? Then you have the angular momentum and torque. Torque equals I alpha. Then you get the conservation of angular momentum. Then you have, they talk about precession. Uh, we don't get into precession here because it's a little bit more advanced topic, but uh, it would be nice if you could read up on that. The, the torque due to the, like a spinning top, causes it to not only rotate, but to precess, you know? And that's why planets also precess, uh, spinning top. <coughs> then it goes to Noether's theorem, conservation of angular momentum, solid bodies, Collection of particles. So this goes back to the English on a pull, right? Because we're hitting it at not in the center. You're giving it an angular, angular momentum. We're yeah. Yeah. Giving angular momentum. You see, then they go to to, to a uh, collection of point particles. What's their angular momentum? So there's a lot of linear algebra here, right? Yeah. Linear, linear algebra notation. Yeah. R plus R crossed into m v. This is linear momentum, and this is the the distance from the pivot point. And all that was angular momentum. Now you go to angular momentum modern definition. <laughs> so all that was <laughs> old definition. <laughs> oh man, the notation gets X sub I, P sub I. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Linear algebra, right? Yeah. Angular momentum, I of J, it's a matrix, basically. Yeah. Is equal to moment of inertia, I, J, K, L, four-dimensional moment of inertia. Mm -hmm. What's a tensor? It's a tensor, yeah. What is that? Yeah, what is it? That's a tensor on it. Well, Google. <laughs> it's a matrix, essentially. So the angular velocity can be defined as an anti-symmetric second order tensor. Okay. The relation between the two anti-symmetric tensors given by the moment of inertia. Like an Excel sheet. You can have like a, you can represent a vector as like a multi, as like n by n. Like an Excel sheet. But then it has like a 
Yeah, it's like uh, two components. Remember how I was saying there's IXX, IYY, IZZ? Because we're but there's also IXY, IXZ. You gotta remember the, the dimensions here, though. You can't put them on a cookie sheet. Yeah. Because there could be a so this is all in your algebra. Dimension. That's, this is kind of the what you do when you go to upper division of mechanics. You do all this notation. It gets quite a bit harder. That's why you got to learn linear very well. Linear is at the root of it. I don't it. remember them bringing that up in there. The Spin, word orbital, tensor. and total angular momentum. Then there's spin angular momentum. Like we know electrons have a spin half and spin negative half. Right? So there's three kinds of angular momentum. Spin, ha spin angular momentum for particles. Then there's orbital angular momentum around the proton. Right? And then the total is the sum of the two, right? So the electrons spin. They can have a negative spin, negative angular momentum, which means they spin downward. Then you've got the Pauli exclusion principle that says you can't have two electrons spinning same direction in the same orbit, right? And that's why you can have 1s1. The next electron, you draw this way, right? 1s2. Opposite spin in chemistry. But that's also physics, I mean. Physicists are what we will get into a battle with the chemistry department here. Who, who founded all that science? Physicists. Yeah. Don't tell them I'm telling you this. <laughs> so then you have L sub n spin, total angular momentum, electrodynamics, in optics, history. Flying through it. Okay, so all of that just was an angular momentum and torque. Okay, so now let's do a problem that would entail us to do some torque. Um, By the way, uh, you've learned from my example that sometimes this could be a good way to find extra problems to solve. Just Google something and then you can see what they've done. But even better, try to do it before looking at what they've done. You know, uh, And then that gives you good, nice uh, opportunity to practice. Let's see, where is the learn? Learn. Where's the problem here? Angular momentum. <coughs> no, I think this is just the lecture. and I just go back to a full quicker one. <laughs> I think the one before it had one. The, the uh, link, I think the link before it had one.
Okay, they didn't have the, quite the one that I was looking for. Okay, mate, but this one is good for the next one. Okay, we'll come back to that. I'll make up one for the one that I'm looking for. Um, so the first I'll start with something like this. Um, let's say some object like a rod pivoted about the end. The mass of the rod is 10 kilograms. The length is two meters. So now imagine the vector from here to here. This is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So let's say this is um, Seven, and then uh, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what would that R vector be, the position vector of the tip of that ruler? Right, it's X, Y, Z. So it's a three-dimensional problem, right? So we have here, uh, in the x direction, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Plus in the y direction, we have uh, nine. And then in the z direction, we've got one, two, three, four, four k hat meters. Okay, so now let's say I pivot this about this end. This is the pivot point. Then uh, I come here and I exert some random force on it, like this. And the components of my force are negative 2i hat plus 3j plus uh, minus k newtons. Right, so it would be something like the rulers like this coming toward you. Then I'm coming here and then the force that I'm exerting is in the negative x direction, so it's, that means it's to the left, right? And then in the y direction, uh, it's up, so it's actually like this, to the left and up, and then in the z direction, it's actually a little bit into the board, so it's like this. A little bit into the board, so I'm pushing the marker in some random 3D direction, right? So then, I want to know what is the torque that I am exerting on the object. A, find the torque. Find the torque. Right? So what's my torque going to be? Well, R crossed into F. R crossed into F. Uh, it's going to be... Well, because R and F kind of make a plane, right? like imagine a 3D plane like this. So if, if R is like this and F is like this, let's see, F is like this, so that makes a plane, right? It's like almost, imagine. Yeah, arrow is the force? Yeah, yeah the force, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like a plane like this, right? And then F is whatever direction. And then so if you go R crossed into F, let's see. Yeah, because well, if it's going negative, it's going so in. the x is going like, uh, what we call into the board and then like, up. Yeah. Like going that way. It's going this way. Or, so it would be going out then. I'm kind of can visualize it if it's like this. R, and then F is, uh, R is like this, and F is like. That's see. why it's going like inside negative. the paper. And then Y is positive, and then Z is in. So it's kind of like this. Yeah. And it's pushing it up this way. So R crossed into F down. So the, the torque is this direction. Perpendicular to that plane made by R and F. Right, like that. <clears throat> but in terms of which direction will it rotate, it's going to rotate like this, you see. So it's going to rotate clockwise. If the torque is this way, then it always rotates clockwise like that. This is called the screw rule, right? Screw. 
That's why we use a right-handed screw system in the world. Because when you screw something like that, it screws into the wall. No one uses a left-handed screw. So it's going this way. Yeah. Go like this, if the torque is in. The, the torque is going in the Into the, the plane. board, kind of. Into yeah. The, yeah, the plane. Yeah. Into that plane. That's right. The use. Yeah. Uh, reverse threading and stuff that rotates though, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. So then how do you find the torque? You have to take the cross product, right? Of R and F. So if it's three dimensional vectors, how do you take the cross product? Terminal. You can't simply do the magnitude of R magnitude of F sine theta because you don't know theta, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're given random three dimensional vectors, you take the determinant. Oh, okay. Right? I, J, K, and then here you get uh, seven, nine, four, and then negative two, three, negative one, right? So I, so then you expand along the top row. You do I, then you cross out that out. Then you do nine, four, three, negative one. Then you do minus J, you alternate the signs, right? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is what we meant earlier by saying tensors. Tensors are kind of like matrices. Yeah. If this was a matrix A, let's say, I would say A12, A11, A13. Like this would be A11, A12, A13. That's the why they, they use the notation IJ. Like they call AIJ like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I two A two one would be this one. A two two, A two three, A three one, A three two, A three three. Okay. So now you expand along the next uh, one, negative J, then you cross that out. 7, 4, negative 2, negative 1. Then you go to the last one, 7, 9, negative 2, 3. Right? Then you do the torque is uh, this one, 9 times negative 1, minus 12, minus j, 7 times negative 1, negative 7, minus negative 8, plus k, 21, minus negative 18. Okay. So negative 21 I, eight minus seven is one, negative J plus K is gonna be 37, 37 K. Newton meters. Now, how do you know you did it right? So when you do it, I want you to check whether or not the dot product of this with at least one of them is zero. Then if it's not zero, you did it wrong. Because the torque should be perpendicular to the plane made by R and F. So it should be perpendicular to either one or both, right? So if you go torque it should be 39, wait, it should be 39K. You know what? I don't really care because I want to show you how to check the answer. Okay. Oh, perfect. You see, I'm trying to show you that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all planned out, right? Of course, every mistake I've ever made. So negative 21 times 7, right? Dot product. Negative 1 times 9 plus 37 times 4. You did it right, that's going to be zero. So a negative uh, 147 minus 9 plus uh, 28 to 148. So negative 156 plus 148. Uh oh, I caught my error. So then I go back and I check. You see? So negative 21, 8 minus 7, 1. Let's see, 
And then the 21 plus uh, this, 39, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you go 39 times 4. 39 times 4, 36, 356. And all of a sudden, that sad face turns into, see, originally it was sad face, then you go like this. <laughs> turns into a happy face. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's zero, okay? So now you know you did it right. So if I tell you, uh, find the torque and express it in vector notation, so then that would be this. If I say, give me the magnitude of the torque, then you do square root of this squared plus this squared plus this squared. So uh, most likely I want you to express the torque in vector notation first, because I want to see if you get, get the signs right. Then I'll, for the next question, when I say find alpha, then for that one I'll say find the magnitude of alpha. Okay, what is alpha? Uh, the angular acceleration of this rod. But can right? you, like, if you were to find out the magnitude of torque, can you just use um, magnitude of R times magnitude of F and times sine theta to find it out? You still get the same answer. As what? Uh, you use a, the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times sine theta. Yeah, but you don't know the theta right now. But theta, we can use R the times dot F over the magnitude of R. Um, times the magnitude of f, and then you use one minus cosine squared theta. Yeah, in other words, if I don't, I know what you're trying to say. If yeah. I don't ask you, if I only ask you the magnitude of torque, yeah. someone could cheat and mm -hmm. without knowing how to do the mass product, right? Yeah, that's what he's saying. So that's he's telling I mean. me don't just ask the magnitude of torque. <laughs> Afterwards, get this guy in the restroom and just <laughs> beat him up, right? So. Yes, he's smart. Because if, you, if, I, if I only ask you magnitude of torque, you could get the angle from dot product. Yeah. Then you can do magnitude of R, magnitude of F, sine of that angle. So and you could get the magnitude of the torque by cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> but watch out, uh, watch out for uh, behind you. <laughs> Just for a week, it will last. The anger will last for a week. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now alpha is gonna be magnitude of torque is I magnitude of alpha. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the magnitude of this guy. Twenty one squared plus one squared plus thirty nine squared. <laughs> so then what's going to be the I? The moment of inertia of a rod uh, is going to be one third, because it's pivoted about the end point, right? One third of its mass of its length squared. Oh, you know what? I can't give you the length is two meters. Because the R vector is already the length. Yeah, right. Because yeah, it might, uh, they might, uh, yeah. you know, uh, contradict each other, right? Yeah. So the L squared is just simply the magnitude of the R squared, you know? So it's just going to be 7 squared plus 9 squared plus 4 squared. So one third of its mass times its length squared, which is the R squared. So this is the L. That times alpha. Now that gives you the magnitude of its angular acceleration. Okay, so let's get that. So the magnitude of the torque, 21 squared. This is 44.306, 
one third ten times this one is uh, 49 plus 81 plus 16, 146 alpha. And then alpha is going to equal 3 times 44, 306 divided by 10 divided by 146. Point oh nine rads per second squared. Now if I say part C, what is omega final in 10 seconds? So after I've rotated this at the same rate, right? So if I go like this and I rotate it at the same rate, then the alpha is going to be the same, right? So then what's omega final in 10 seconds? So I, ju I can just simply use kinematics. Omega final is omega initial plus alpha t. So that's going to be 0 0.091 times 10 seconds, which is 0 0.91 rads per second. And then part D, I can say, find the final angular momentum. Find L final. Now there's two ways you can do that. How can you do that? <clears throat> One way is to say L final is I omega final. I omega final. So you take the I that you have, which is this guy. Times the omega final that we got, 0.91. So once you get the alpha, you can get the omega. Once you get the omega, you can get the final angular momentum of the object, right? Or the other way to get the final angular momentum is to say torque is change in angular momentum over time. Hmm. So the final angular momentum is simply the torque times the time. L final is torque times delta T. So that's probably easier because I already know the torque is this guy, 44.306. I multiply that by 10 seconds, I'm gonna get 443.06. So the final angular momentum is 443.06. But just to check, I can do this also, just to check, check that I haven't made any mistake. If both of them are consistently the same, then I'm doing it right. So one is I omega, and the other one is torque dt. You know? So 10 divided by 3 times 146 times 0.91. Yep, same thing. There's a little rounding error, but 442.8. Okay, so that's a good problem. With this problem, you illustrate how to you do the cross product, how to check if your cross product is okay. Find the magnitude of it, find the alpha, find the omega, find the final angular momentum. Oh, so, so can you prove like the angular momentum is equal to the moments of inertia times um, the angular speed again? Like how you prove that? How this one? Yeah, I... Remember there were two forms of the angular momentum, I omega and the other one is R crossed into P. Yeah, I know R crossed into P, but how like, where is that coming from? I times. Um, In other words, why they're the same? Why is saying I and then o omega? That's one. That's one. Yeah. Uh, the quickest way to say that is. Um, yeah, you have P I think that page that we were looking at goes over it. That, yeah. But uh, the quickest way to say it is if you have a string and an object, and then this is the momentum. 
This is uh, R. So if the, the angular momentum is R crossed into P, uh, what's P? MV, right? Yeah, MV. But then what's V? V is R omega, right? V is R omega, yeah. Right? Oh. Here you go. Oh. So then what's this? R crossed M. into M R, R omega. Squared. That's I. Is going to equal what? Oh. R squared, M R squared which, omega. Which is I. Which is omega. I. Mm. M R squared of a point object. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. To a point of view. Let's see, maybe we could do this one. This was another kind of problem there. Let's see. I like it. Cockroach problem. Cockroach with a mass M runs counterclockwise. Okay, so let's see if it's kind of doable quickly. Uh, cockroach with a mass M runs counterclockwise around the rim of a lazy Susan, a circular dish mounted on a vertical axis. I guess I didn't know they call that lazy shoes. Oh, it's just basically like a merry-go-round, like. Yeah, it's you put it in the center of a table, so you spin food around and somewhere. Oh, is that the lazy, lazy Susan? Lazy Susan, yeah. You just oh, rotate. Oh, okay, okay. You okay. Rotate. So cockroach. Well, first of all, if there's a cockroach there, that the be, restaurant yeah. should be rated <laughs> D, right? Fail. So with a mass M runs counterclockwise, a radius R and rotational inertia I with frictionless bearings. The cockroach's speed with respect to the Earth is V. Whereas the lazy Susan turns clockwise with angular speed omega zero. The cockroach finds a bread crumb on the rim and of course stops. What is the angular speed of the lazy Susan after cockroach stops? Is mechanical energy conserved? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So what's happening here in this problem? This lazy Susan has a mass M. Oh, let's see, hold on. Radius R and rotational inertia I, right? And then the radius is R. It's a solid disc, right? And then which direction is the cockroach running? Counterclockwise. Cockroach is running counterclockwise. counterclockwise. With a velocity what? V. Right? And then which direction is the, uh, the uh, lazy Susan turn? Clockwise with angular speed omega zero. Okay. So the, the, this, the thing is rotating this way, clockwise, but the cockroach is running that way, omega zero. Okay, so then the cockroach sees, uh, uh, finds a breadcrumb somewhere here. Bread, and then so it comes and it stops to eat it. So when it stops, what's gonna happen? He has no longer any angular momentum, right? So what has to happen? Conservation of angular momentum. So the initial angular momentum of the system needs to be to the final. What's the original angular momentum of the system? That's R cross P. This one has angular momentum in, into the board, right? Yeah, right. And what is the angular momentum? I omega zero. Right? Which direction is the angular momentum of the cockroach? Out. Out of the board. And then for the cockroach, I treat it as a point particle. So then it's uh, more angular momentum is R M V. So I don't do I omega. Or you could do I omega, it's just that I is MR squared, you know. So for a cockroach, it's just better to do it uh, uh, R M V, right? So minus R M V, where M is the mass of the cockroach, right? They gave you the mass of the cockroach? Well, they said call it M, you know. 
right? So now the final angular momentum of the system is going to be what? Pi omega pi naught. Because the cockroach rests. Okay, so what's the question asking? What is the angular speed of the lazy Susan after the cockroach stops? So if you did it this way, you're half right. You just divide by i, divide by i, and then omega final is uh, omega zero minus r m v over i. This is smiley face, but then a sad face. Half right. Because uh, smiley face, because you did realize that the two angular momentums are competing against each other. You didn't add it. Uh, and uh, smiley face, because you got the right equation for R and B, right? Uh, smiley face that you realized at the end uh, the cockroach has no angular momentum. Right? So all those good reasons are for smiley face. But then what's the sad face for? Anyone realize what the mistake is? What's the sad face for? Conservation of angular momentum? No, we did conserve yeah. angular momentum, yeah. It's a very subtle point, very tricky. Direction? No, yeah. you, did, you did take into account the direction. Oh. I mean, it's rotating, it does seem true. So when he stops, what should happen? Should this start rotating faster? Yeah. Or slower? Faster. No, it should start rotating slower, right? Yeah, yeah, according to this, it rotates slower at the end. Yeah, because he's, is his little legs able to... Well, in other, in other words, also think about it from this way. If the cockroach is walking, how does the cockroach stop? When, when you're walking this way, how do you stop? You exert the force forward oh, yeah. on the to surface count. that you're on, to and the, the, system, the system exerts a force back. Right. So in order for the cockroach to stop, he has to exert a force like this on the disc, right. right? Forward, so that the disc in return exerts a force back on him, yeah. and it makes him stop. But this force, this way, is going to do what to this rotation? It's going to cause it to slow down, yeah. right? So if something is going like this, then I'm walking, and then I'm slowing, I'm pushing like this on the system. So I'm causing that rotation to slow down. So that's good because my answer sh does show that it has slowed. But there's a subtle thing that I forgot. That's this moment of inertia. The At the end of the case, the cockroach becomes a part of the disk system when oh. he stops. Oh. Which is so the moment of inertia of the system is the moment of inertia of the disk plus the moment of inertia of the cockroach. <laughs> Very subtle, right? So the answer should be I omega zero minus R and B is I plus M R squared. Now no longer the sad face. Tricky? Yeah. Tricky, Alan? Yeah. <laughs> right? So now you divide by this. Uh, you get I omega zero now if this website is a legit website that's the answer they'll have let's see let's see let's see let's see yeah <sighs> <laughs> right RMV plus is it plus wait is it plus no, we have a, 
Minus, right? Yeah. <coughs> Why did they do minus? Why did they do plus? This rotation. That seems wrong, huh? It says omega zero. That line right yeah, above I, it. Uh, rotation measure the disk. Note that since the rotation is clockwise, is less than zero. Total or omega zero is less than zero. Oh, according to them, omega zero is negative. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I would prefer to do like this. To make omega zero absolute value of omega zero. Yeah. Uh, it can't be that they're at, you should add them. So that is the answer. So then the answer, uh, the question asks, is energy conserved in the system? So they calculate the initial energy of the system, half mass velocity of the cockroach squared plus half I, the I of the disk omega zero squared. Then can they calculate the final moment of inertia, the final kinetic energy of the system? See, in this problem, angular momentum is conserved, but we want to know, is the energy conserved, right? So the initial energy is this, Final energy is half, see the total moment of inertia, I plus MR squared, then what's omega R? Omega R is what we calculated, I omega zero minus R. I prefer if they have a minus here again, right? I plus M omega squared. So now they're gonna calculate that, then they're gonna subtract from the initial kinetic energy. Uh, it ends up that you lose kinetic energy you lose it because the omega goes down, the omega gets smaller. When you square that, it has a multiplicative effect because this is minus, right? So it has a multiplicative effect. So you lose kinetic energy. Kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial is actually negative. So you lose energy, why? Because the work that the cockroach did on the system by stopping it. Now if the cockroach instead had begun to run faster, you would gain energy, right? If he started running, if I imagine he saw some food here and he started running faster, you know, then you gain energy. But if he stops, he's causing the system to lose energy. Nice problem. So you guys could do it like that too. Just go find nice uh, little problems like that on random websites and then just you know, do it, solve it yourself. Pretty good. Okay. So we'll do some more collision type problems like this on Monday, and then we'll start chapter 12, which is statics. Monday the 10th. Remember we posted.